for you. It's good. Everybody can hear me? All right, terrific. Well, my name is uh, Dan Seal from Boeing. I work on Boeing Defense Side out of St. Louis. I want to talk to you today about a new system engineering framework for model-based engineering. We call it the MBE Diamond. So since you're here at INCOSI today, you've probably seen this thing before. The iconic system engineering V it was first created in the early 1990s, so it's celebrating its 30th birthday here very soon. And it was really a way to very simply symbolize the creation of a complex engineered systems through an engineering process. Uh, it follows a series of steps left to right across the V from the decomposition of requirements to system elements on the left side of the V and then integration and eventually the production and test evaluation of those elements on the right side of the V2 where you deliver the product. Um, so great job for that. Um, unfortunately, many people only use the V for their product. They don't apply it to their production systems. They don't apply it to their support and services. Nowhere in the guidelines for the system engineering V did it said this is really only should be product focused, but that's the way we typically use it. Uh, so that's really one of the shortcomings. The other thing I wanted to mention was th this is so iconic, it's so ubiquitous. Uh, I know you can't read it in the back of the room, but this particular V came from the US Department of Transportation, Federal Highway Administration. So they use the system engineering V to build roads and bridges, right? So, it's everywhere, it's, it's not just an aerospace thing, not just a, uh, it's just used everywhere. So, but once again, one shortfall was people tend to use it for the engineered, complex engineered systems of products. The next is it uh, implies a sequential series of events. And if you don't believe me, how many of you have ever mapped this to a program schedule or an enterprise standard gated process? So sometimes there's a timeline across the bottom. And as soon as you do that, you tell people at this point in time, you should be here in the V. So it, it's not going to show the, the uh, interactive nature of it. It was also created in a time when it was document-centric. In fact, every little oval, blue oval throughout that V represents a document approval process. At that time, the documents were your authoritative source of truth. Unfortunately, that doesn't, that doesn't cut it in a model-based world where the models become your authoritative source of truth. So you don't have a document handoff from one phase uh, to another. It also fails to show the integrated and iterative nature of system engineering. Um, so one thing you'll see a lot of ones where we'll, we show horizontal feedback lines to show that the right side of the V is tied to the left side of the V. And in fact, every element on the left side needs to be verified by something on the right side. Um, so there's always that horizontal symmetry. As soon as you do that, all of a sudden this is starting to get a little bit more complex now, right? So historic, historical attempts to show that iterative, iterative nature is folks have used this, what we call the system engineering engine, right? Other folks have called it the egg diagram, right? It's those boxes that flow together to show the feedback paths. And this occurs at every step in the system engineering process. So if you imagine if I shrink that down and show it all along the V, it gets really complicated. So after, after looking at kind of these constraints for a model-based world, we came to the conclusion that really we really needed a new symbol to represent the more complex nature of the model-based environment that we all operate in today. So we're engineers, so we did a trade study. <laughs> Believe it or not. So you have to have something to trade. We had all sorts of different crazy ideas for what this thing should look like. How do you pick one? Well, so you have to have some evaluation criteria, and that's what's shown on the slide here. You have to have weighting factors. Well, which of those evaluation criteria carry the most weight? So one, we needed to represent MBE as a multidimensional iterative process that encompasses both the physical and virtual systems. So you heard the opening comments, uh, uh, Stefan talked about um, uh, the co-engineering, right? Pull all those stakeholders in. We wanted that, this ultimate symbol to show that, this co-engineering. Um, you have to reflect the uh, integrated nature with feedback from various stakeholders across the product, across the life cycle. That was another key thing. We wanted to show the relationship spanning the life cycle. So once again, not just a focus on the product, but a simultaneous focus on the product, the production system, and the support and services. Basically a life cycle focus versus a where I'm at currently in the life cycle focus. Finally, and these 
last two were the most important. We needed to visually communicate how model-based engineering is different than traditional system engineering. So could I have made all this stuff fit in the old system engineering V? Yes, we could have. But we visually wanted to show that we're doing business differently. This is not the way we did business decades ago. This is a new thing. So visually, we wanted it to look different. And then the last thing is, the great thing about the V is we all use it and we all tailor it for our own needs. But you could start with the simple framework that you can barely read here and you instantly recognize, oh yeah, that's the system engineering V. We wanted a simple framework like that that various industries could take own, tailorize for their own use. Um, so once again, that was the hardest part in the trade study. It needs to be simple, but flexible and tailorable for your particular use. So what we came up with was the MBE diamond concept. So the bottom represents the traditional system engineering V. You can see it in there. So those of you that love the system engineering V, there it is. The diamond is built upon that. That serves as the foundation for it. Um, the top half represents the virtual systems that inform the physical systems throughout the life cycle. And then the middle of it represents the digital thread which connects those models and simulations to the physical world and in fact becomes the authoritative source of truth uh, throughout that life cycle. Once again, in Stefan's talk, he talked about modeling and simulation-based engineering, MSBE. Look at the top of the diamond there, models and simulations, modeling and simulation-based engineering. So visually, this shows that it's, it's a different way of doing engineering. So let me show you how did we come up with this. I kind of jumped to the end and showed you the answer before I took you through the process. So if you start with the traditional system engineering V, right, it starts with customer needs or requirements, and it works through a, a, the engineering process to deliver solutions to fulfill those needs. And along the way, there are a series of milestones or artifacts which show that you're making progress in there. What's not always shown is there is horizontal symmetry on these, right? So all elements on the left side of the V need to be verified by a corresponding element on the right side of the V. So once again, we typically show horizontal feedback lines in the middle of the V. So hopefully none of this is new to you. The new part is when we start to look at the virtual world, the virtual representation of the physical systems, our easiest way to do that was well, let's just flip the V upon itself and make it the virtual V. Tried to draw it a little bit lighter color, a little bit different color with some kind of lines through it to show that it's, it's not really there. It's the virtual component of it. It's not a physical thing. It's the virtual representation of that physical thing. But it relies on models and simulations. But once again, there are a series of artifacts or milestones along the journey on the virtual world. And just like on the bottom half of the V, there is intentional symmetry between those elements. Models that you create on the left-hand side of that upper diamond get used in high-fidelity simulations on the right-half side. Once again, that becomes the authoritative source of truth. Now let's go look at just the left-hand side for a moment. And you'll notice that there is intentional symmetry there as well. The virtual elements have a corresponding physical element that it's informing on every element on the left side of the V. And when we take a look at the right side of the V, we'll see the exact same thing happen. Every element on the right side of the diamond tracks to a, a corresponding element on the, on the bottom half. And the data flow isn't one direction. It just doesn't come from the virtual to the physical. It can actually flow both ways. For example, let's assume you've got a factory and you have Internet of Things sensors in your factory. You can collect that real-time data, feed it back into your production system model, and start to do some what-if analysis, like you're thinking about a rate change. You can use real factory data to inform that, calibrate your model, and actually do that. Vice versa, you can use high-fidelity physical simulations to maybe reduce some of physical testing certification by analysis. So the information flow can flow either way. You can use high fidelity simulations to inform or reduce the need for physical uh, testing or assets, and vice versa, you can take data from a physical asset and use it to calibrate and do what-if analysis uh, with, with your model. So we start to see the format for the diamond forming here. Um, once again, at, at a simplest phase, this is it, right? Starts with needs, deliver solutions just like system engineering does. It's got the virtual on the, the top and the physical on the bottom. There is horizontal symmetry across the bottom. There is horizontal symmetry across the top. There's vertical symmetry 
from the top to the bottom. There's vertical symmetry from the bottom to the top. Once again, I've shown unidirectional areas. They're, they're actually bidirectional. It's data flow uh, all over the place. So we kind of conclude it with putting the digital thread, kind of a new term in the model-based engineering world, right? It provides that digital connectivity of the data. So it, it connects that top half to the bottom half. It connects your models and simulations uh, to your physical world. Uh, the other thing it does, and now you'll notice, by the way, that all the arrows are bidirectional, as they should be. Everything can inform everything else. But around the term digital thread, we wanted to make it very clear that this just isn't just for product. So it, hard for you to read in the back, but it says the product system, the production system, and the support and services. So that's the life cycle view. Optimize all of them simultaneously. Don't figure out how to build the best product which meets your customer needs, then figure out how to build it then figure out how to support it. Do all that up front. Once again, that's that co-engineering, get all those downstream stakeholders involved early on and, and do the trades when you, at, at the appropriate point in time when you can do those trades. Now I want to talk to you a little bit about um, uh, just kind of a review of, uh, of where this is at. So it starts with, um, once again, concurrent Virtual and physical development. I do want to jump ahead to my notes because I, I tied back to something Stefan said. So that integrated physical and virtual um, development across the life cycle from left to right, that traditional kind of engineering flow. The bottom should look very familiar. It is the traditional system engineering V for the physical systems, but once again, not just the product, but your production, your support and services. The top half represents the virtual representation of those physical systems, the authoritative source of truth that's used to inform those physical systems. The inside is that digital thread, which provides that connectivity from those uh, digital systems to the physical systems. Once again, the inside of the circle really represents that concurrent development of the product, production system, support and services. And then the physical and virtual paths, really they inform each other throughout the life cycle. Um, now, the one thing I can't show on this, even though I have a lot of animated charts, is that the life cycle of the top, the clock speed of the top, if you will, is actually faster than the clock speed of the bottom. You heard uh, Mark in his opening comments, uh, the short definition of MBSE was fail often, fail early, build it right once, right? This can do that, right? So you fail early in the virtual world. Fail as many times as you want. Go through a thousand iterations of that. Fail often in there and learn from that. And take that learning and inform your physical system so you build it right with first time quality one time. There's no, there's no engineering escapes. There's no redesign rework required. It comes together exactly as you envision. So this does that. I, I wish I tried to come up with a way to show the clock speed of the top half of the diamond faster than the bottom, but then it starts to look really weird and it's, it's got to be animated. Um, so. This is, this is what we ended up with. So really what, what we've moved away from the traditional system engineering V developed back in the 90s for the paper-based world to uh, for the 2020s and beyond a MBE diamond. And we really think it is about moving away from that document-centric area to a model-based area. And then, so hold your questions, ponder this, ask me after the break. <laughs> Very good, that's it. <laughs>